Hello, and welcome to the University of Missouri's special video series, Understanding Evolution. That's right, you're just a fancy monkey. Today's episode, Sexual Selection. By now, we're familiar with the process of natural selection. Occasional genetic mutations within an organism will produce phenotypic variations. If these new variations aid in survival, they will persist in the organism's genes, being reproduced in subsequent generations. If the mutation inhibits survival, the carrier will die, taking the mutation with it. But if we stop to think about it, we'll probably come up with a big question. What about peacocks? Surely those big tails can't help in survival. And what's with those little dealies on their heads? Well, my friends, the answer lies in sexual selection. We often hear that evolution is the survival of the fittest. But being very good at surviving is not enough. To be the fittest, in the biological sense, is to be the best at producing fertile offspring. But what does it all mean? It means that if you want to pass on your genes, you had better be able to find a mate. And that means being attractive. That makes sense, all right. Sexual selection is a competition between members of the same species. And it's all about who gets to mate. In our example, somewhere along the line, before peacocks looked anything like they do today, peahens began paying attention to their mates' tails. They took an especial fancy to peacocks with the largest tails and developed an appreciation for certain color patterns. Soon, a sort of feedback loop was formed and tails became bigger and bigger. There are many other examples of sexual selection. The bright colors of birds in general. When we see two elk bulls locking horns, we're seeing sexual selection. In fact, any time secondary sexual characteristics such as horns, tails, or coloration are exaggerated, sexual selection is likely the process in action.